thing that comes up for patients already on treatment um, is that unfortunately some patients do become resistant to the treatment that they're taking and have CLL progression um, then and need another line of therapy. So you know, there is a lot of testing out there um, for various different treatment types to start to look at how do we evaluate uh, resistance, um, looking at mutations. Um, but I do want to highlight that, um, you know, still, uh, even in this era where some of that testing might be available, what really should be guiding clinicians and what guides me in clinical practice um, and according to the guidelines is really is the patient having signs or symptoms of CLL progression, progressive lymph nodes, growth of the spleen, worsening cytopenias, constitutional B symptoms, lymphocytosis, all those disease markers and the clinician's assessment is really what's key. Couldn't agree more. And we have patients who do develop resistance. Unfortunately, we also have patients who are intolerant to the treatments that they're on. So they develop a side effect that becomes um, problematic enough that we need to stop that medication. There are a couple of different strategies, and a lot of it depends on what the actual intolerance is. Are these nuisance side effects that we can, um, we can deal with by switching to another drug in the same class? Or are these really more significant side effects where we need to entirely switch classes? And that is another important consideration. Often when patients are intolerant, we do stop medication um, for some amount of time to let the adverse event really wash out before we start a new therapy. It also highlights that there are patients who are intolerant in the setting of pretty good disease control. And those are patients where you can, on a case-by-case -case basis, stop therapy and observe for some amount of time before you need to treat. There are drugs that are intended to be give, given continuously, but sometimes if patients are developing side effects, that is a reason for discontinuation. You don't always need to rush into the next line of therapy. That's significantly different than the case of resistance, where often when you're stopping a therapy in the setting of resistance, the disease pace really will pick up. And that's an important um, point as well. So if a patient's developing resistance, often keeping them on their drug until you have the next line of therapy in, in place is an important piece um, because otherwise you can really develop quick progression without, um, without a, a next line. Yeah, I think that that's really important. And you hit on something that is just so key uh, for providers to pay attention to. And that it really is, you know, it comes into play uh, in patients who might have had multiple therapies for their CLL. You know, what was the reason for discontinuation of the prior treatment? Was it a side effect, toxicity, were they intolerant to the medicine and not truly progressing on the medicine, but might have had good disease control? Or was it a case where, you know, they were taking the medicine or shortly after finishing the therapy, if it wasn't continuous, that they actually had true CLL progression with some of the signs and symptoms we talked about? And I usually use that as a guiding principle uh, when selecting therapy. Mm -hmm.